that I will be able to say something about our theme for this year. Since our speaker al already elab elaborated on this, I just would like to add some uh, things regarding our theme uh, for this year, prove all things. First Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse number 21. Let us read this all together. Prove all things, hold fast that which is good. Father, we're so thankful for gathering us again today. We thank you, Lord, for you have heard our prayers, our supplication. We thank you, O God, that we have a time to honor you, to worship you, to lift you up, to adore you, O God. We thank you that we were able to confess our sins, O God. And we thank you because you're faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all our unrighteousness. We thank you, O God, because once again we have a time to use, to spend, to once again study your word, to dig deeper, Lord, as you allow us to, with the help of the Holy Spirit enlightening us, giving us wisdom, causing us to understand your word, and guiding us, O God, with your grace to make these things appropriated, O God, in our lives. Help me today, Lord, as I elaborate on this verse, and help your people as they listen. May we learn, O God, and help us to know what to do, and give us your grace, Lord, to actually do what we are supposed to do. We thank you, we love you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you very much. So we're going to study only one verse, and that is found in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse number 21. Uh, this verse is not a standalone verse, but it is uh, a verse uh, sandwiched between uh, admonitions and encouragement and commandment that the Apostle Paul gave to the churches at Thessalonica. Verse 16, Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing and everything give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Quench not the spirit. Despise not prophesyings. Abstain from all appearance of evil. And uh, the sanctification that God will do to us and the faithfulness of our God. Who not only called us, but he will be the one to do. What he called us to accomplish in our lives. And then the request that... Uh, we need to pray for each other and that we need to be uh, cordial with each other. And then a charge of the Apostle Paul that the epistle must be read. And then, of course, the grace of the Trinity is mentioned. But as I have said, in the middle of this, or uh, almost at the end of this, Paul says, prove all things, hold fast that which is good. Now, it is impossible for us to read, to listen, and to do all things. Why? Because our life is limited. There are things that we cannot know. There are things that we will not know. There are things that we will not hear. There are things that we will not read. And there are things that we will not do in the limited life that we have. But the things that we read, the things that we hear, and the things that we do, consist of our all things. Everything that I have read, everything that I will read, Everything that I heard and everything that I will hear, everything that I have done and everything that I will do consists of my all things. Now, my all things may be different from your all things. There are things that you will hear that I may not be able to hear. There are things that you will read that I may not be able to read. Actually, there are so many things that Milka have read that I will uh, never, never be able to read, like Harry Potter... Uh, you have read that? Like, uh, what, what are the, the kind of uh, books that you read? No, I, re I read that. <laughs> Nancy Drew, Manga, Santo, uh, Kaimito. I won't be able to read that. So my old things may be different to your old things, but all of us, we have our old things. Everything that your experience that happened to you consists of your all things. Now, the Bible commands us to prove all things. Meaning to say, God will not allow us to read anything that we should not prove. 
God will not actually allow us to listen to anything that we should not prove. God will not allow us to do anything in our lives that we should not prove. It is God's command that whatever we do, whatever we say, whatever we hear, whatever we read, whatever we listen to must be proven by us. It is something that people are actually not uh, concerned about or giving importance to. Because if you are going to recall everything that you have done yesterday, uh, very few of us will be able to recall them. Very few of us are, taking, are paying close attention to the things that we are doing. Very few people are paying close attention to the things that they are reading. And very few people are paying uh, uh, attention to the things that they have been listening to or the things that they have been hearing. But a command is given to us in the Bible that as children of God, we need to prove all things. Look at 1 John chapter 4, verses 1 to 5. The Bible says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Among many things, those things that involves God must be something that we need to pay close attention to. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God, every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. Kaya iglesia ni Cristo, ano te? Hindi kasali rito yan eh. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. That's why we do not have to listen to these people. We have to be careful to whom we're listening to. And this is that spirit of Antichrist. Whereof you have heard that it should come and even now already is it in the word. It was written more than 2,000 years ago. There are already so many antichrists during that time. How much more in our time? That's why testing all things is very important. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the word. And verse number 5, they are of the word, therefore speak they of the word, and the word heareth them. So we are commanded by God to prove all things. It means to test all that we hear, all that we read, and all that we do. So in this case, we can see that fatalism is not encouraged by the Bible. Have you heard the uh, saying, Kesera, sera, whatever will be, will be? Christians should not be like that. We should not be fatalists. We do not believe in faith. F-A-T-E, that it is something that we have no control about. It is something that we just need to accept because life is like that. No, because in the Bible, it is very clear that God has a plan for all His children. There is a path that we must uh, uh, go through in our life. And when we got saved, God called us to do something that will glorify Him. So we are not encouraged to be fatalists. That is not in the Bible. Epicureanism and, sto and being stoic is not encouraged by the Bible. What is Epicureanism or being a stoic? It is a sensual enjoyment of food and drink. That's why in the Bible, it says in 1718 of Acts, let's look at that. This is not encouraged by the Bible, even though it is in the Bible. Then certain philosophers of the Epicureans and of the Stoics encountered him, and some said, What will this babbler say? Other, some, he seemed to be a setter forth of strange gods, because he preached unto them Jesus and the resurrection. What do they believe? They believe in uh, Luke chapter 12, verse 19. This is what they advocate, the Epicureans and the Stoics. And I will say to my soul, soul, thou was much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. That is what the Epicureans and that is what the Stoics believe. That they derive all joy in eating and drinking and being merry because anyway, tomorrow we will die. And that is not what the Bible wants us to be. That is the reason why we need to prove all things. 
And then apathy is not encouraged by God's word. Apathy is uh, not being concerned, not being involved, that you just don't care what happened. And this is found in Revelation chapter 3, verse number 16. That's the reason why God warned uh, this church that is going to be spewed out of the mouth of God. So then, because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. You see, as a Christian, there is a position that we must stand to. It is either we are all out for God, or we are not for God entirely. There is no middle ground. There is no, well, in this area, I am going to be all out for God, but in this area, I am going to take it easy. No, ladies and gentlemen, it is either you are on the side of God, or you are on the other side. That is why being uh, sober, being uh, vigilant, is a part of being a Christian. There is a war, and we cannot relax. There is a battle, and we cannot just stand still. There is something that we need to do, and therefore apathy is not encouraged by God's word. You see, so many Christians are not doing anything, even though the word is dying and going to hell. So many Christians are not doing anything, even though the church is sliding down the path of apostasy, even though some Christians may know the truth. But they just don't care. They are apathetic. They just don't care. What's important for them is that I am saved. When I die, I will go to heaven. That's it. I do not want to lose friends. I do not want to be branded. I do not want to lose relationships. Ladies and gentlemen, as Christians, we need to be all out for the Lord. That's why the Lord Jesus Christ says, deny yourself. Why? Because the only thing that you will uh, fight the battle with all your might is if you have denied your very own life. Alam ba yung mga kamikaze, yung mga, sa, sa, yung mga Japanese, during uh, uh, World War II, uh, when, when they were able to uh, paralyze the uh, South Pacific fleet of uh, USA during that war, is because of the kamikaze. They uh, led what we call a suicide mission, not thinking of their lives, but their only goal is for the imperialist Japan so that they will win the war. So they will, uh, what they call, they will uh, try to uh, crush their plane to, to uh, uh, destroy the uh, ship of the Americans so that they won't be able to move out of Pearl Harbor and be a part of that war in the Pacific during that time. So why were they able to paralyze America during that time? Because they abandoned everything and they did everything for the glory of Japan. And ladies and gentlemen, if that is going to be our attitude, that we will abandon everything in order to glorify God, there is a good chance that we can lift up the standard and we will be able to preserve the truth in the word of God. Amen. So that is why no Christian should be apathetic. We should be involved in what we are doing for the glory of God. So if we are to prove all things, then there must be a standard that we must use to prove all things, to test all things. Like, like for example, if you want to... Uh, to prove uh, the uh, uh, gold, if it is genuine, if, uh, the carrot of a gold, there is a standard that it must go through so that it will be proven to be pure gold. Or if it is 21K or 18K or no K at all. So there is a standard that they're going to use. If you want to know if you're tall or short, there is a measurement that must be used in order to determine your height. And some people hate that. But some people welcome it. Like for example, if you want to know if you, are, if you belong to the tall category or to 
the uh, middle category or if you belong to the midget category. Those five feet below, raise your hand. Oh, si Rejoice lang ang anes. Sino pa? Oh, si ano? Ayan, mga five feet below yan. Oh, anong height mo? Si Sir Kay, anong height mo? Ah, anong height mo? Baka may hindi niya alam. <laughs> five eight? Ang tangkad mo ah. Ikaw, Joanna Lee, ano height mo? Four? Four nine. So, so there are standards that, anyway, uh, there is a secret in order for you to be taller when they're measuring you. You wear your hair uh, upward like that. Like like the, during the time of no, uh, Nora Honor and Nova Villa. What do you call that, that uh, style of hair? Ay, tiisin mo. Ah, uh, tis, uh, tiisin mo. And then you will be measured as a taller person. So there must be a standard in order to prove all things. Now, listen. Number one, you are not the standard. Why? Because if we are the standard, there is a tendency that we will justify everything that we believe. That we will justify everything that we do. That we will justify everything that we read. Look at John uh, chapter, Luke chapter 18 verses 9 to 14. Luke chapter 18, 9 to 14. Just the, the beginning statement of this is very clear. And he spake this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. So, if you will make yourself your standard, then you are always right. Very, very seldom that people with righteous complexity will admit that they are wrong. And even if they are wrong, they have an excuse. They will never admit that they are wrong per se, but the reason why they are wrong is because of other things, because of other events, or because of other people. That is why we are not the standard. Because if I will look at myself, I believe that I am okay. If you, will, if you will look at within yourself, you will believe that you are okay. And even those, even criminals, even thieves believe that what they're doing is right because anyway, what they're stealing from rich people are being given to poor people. So we have a tendency to justify ourselves. That is why we are not the standard. Look at, uh, let's read this until verse number 14. Two men went up into the temple to pray, and one a Pharisee, and the other a publican. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are. Can you see yourself there? I can see myself there. There, there are times that I compare myself to other people and, and then feel good about myself. Because you see, our tendency is when we compare ourselves to other people, we seem to look for a person that is lower than us. And then we compare ourselves to them. So that we can feel better. And we can feel that we are holier than other people. That even though we are sinning, we're okay. Because our sins are not as uh, heinous as the sins of other people. He said that, I am not as other men are, extortioners. You see, he even uh, specified the things because the Publican is an extortioner. They are getting money from uh, the Jews and giving it to the Roman government. And then unjust adulterers or even as this publican. Even at this publican. So he pointed his finger unto other people. I fast twice in the week. And then he compared himself to that person. I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of all that I possess, referring that he is obedient to the law. And the publican standing afar off would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. It is very seldom that we will find people who are willing to admit that they are undone before God. So many people wanted to justify what they are doing 
They want to give reason why and excuses why they are doing what they are doing. And then we can see that at the last verse, I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone that exalted himself shall be abased. Everyone that exalted himself shall be abased. And so many people are exalting themselves. And sad to say that we can find them even in the group of people that call themselves men of God. That they exalt themselves. And he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. That is why when we get to heaven, when we are finally standing before the judgment seat of the Lord Jesus Christ, we will be surprised that the people that will be known in that place are the people unknown here on earth. Why? Because they don't care. They just do their job. They just perform their calling. They do not care. If people will notice, they just want to glorify God in their lives. Amen? So, we are not the uh, standard because we tend to justify ourselves. Not only that, pragmatism will be applied in all things that we do. We are generally pragmatists. Because for us, if something works, then it is okay. It doesn't matter if it is according to the Word of God. It doesn't matter if uh, we can find it being taught by the Word of God. As long as it works, then it is okay. And that is our tendency. Whatever works. That is why I was surprised. There was a theme. Use me, O oh God. Whatever. Whatever, God. So, parang pragmatism yun eh, no? <laughs> Pero anyway, to be, in order, uh, uh, by giving them the benefit of the doubt, it is, uh, they're saying that, whatever you want, Lord, use me. But then again, pragmatism is very uh, subtle that sometimes we do not know that the Lord is not the one using us, but we are using the Lord because we think that Everything that works must be from God. You see, I'll give you an example. My pastor, when he surrendered his life, is about to get rich. But then he surrendered his life to the Lord, and he actually exchanged earning tens of thousands of pesos to 45 pesos a week. And the family of his wife are known in Lubao, and they are rich. Lubao and Guagua. Actually, the mayor of Guagua during that time is even a relative of his. And whenever he goes there in order to, you know, share the word of God or just wanted to have fellowship with family, the mayor, Yusuf, will always tell him, boy, that's how he call my pastor, boy, look at my gods. How can you say that your God is the true God when you are poor. And my God are idols when I am rich. That's pragmatism. Amen? That's pragmatism. So when you think that everything that works must be from God, then that's dangerous. Because not everything that works is from God, but everything that is biblical is from God. It may be small. It may be uh, dangerous. It may be filled with, with uh, storms of life. It doesn't matter if it is from God. If it is biblical, then that is from God. That's why there are many churches in the Philippines who will look at us and they will say that maybe what you're doing is not from the Lord. Because you are not growing. Because you are not being blessed. Because for them, blessing is number and blessing our finances. But ladies and gentlemen, doing God's will is the greatest blessing that we can receive in life. Amen. So, we are not the final authority. Why? Because we can be pragmatists. Look at Revelation uh, uh, Proverbs 14.12 There is a way which seemeth right unto a man. You see? See, met right, pragmatism. 
but the end thereof are the ways of death. So, you know, many people believe that they will end up in heaven. Because they believe that God is a God of love and there is nothing wrong with that, but they forget that God is a just God. So they believe that as long as their good works will outweigh their bad works, then they're going to go to heaven. So that is a way that is seemed to be right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse number 14. 1 Corinthians 2, 14. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. So you see, so many people think that the things of the Lord are foolishness simply because they cannot understand them. So people, if they do not understand, believe that it must not be from God. Because God will make you understand things if those things are for Him. That's pragmatism. What I'm doing is working, therefore I believe that God is in it. Philippians chapter 2 verse number 3. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. You see, pragmatists can do things in vain glory because they thought that what they're doing is being glorified by God or being blessed by the Lord. But you see, the Bible's uh, attitude is that everybody should be humble and should even think that other people are higher than they are. Steaming them higher, meaning respecting and giving preference to other people. Kaya nga, minsan yung, yung mga style na, the style that when you are going to uh, introduce a speaker, you are going to look at all the accolade that you can uh, put before the name of the speaker. Our speaker is a PhD. He's a... Uh, DVD. ACDC. WXYZ. And then he graduated from this. Uh, he accomplished this. He is known as the father of. And he is the son of. And he is the niece of. And the nephew of. And he has seven granddaughters and eight uh, grandsons. Uh, my, very simple. Our speaker today is the deacon of IBCSR, Brother Rilson Tinga. That's it. Our speaker for today is a sinner saved by God's grace, Brother Jun Quenza. That's it. Why do we have to put all of this accolade that will lift the ego of a man and give people so much expectation that we are giving room for the devil to work and destroy everything that God wanted to accomplish that day. You were introduced as a very a superhuman person and then your preaching is lackadaisical. And then people will say, ito ganyan lang pala. Naalala ko tuloy yung si kaibigan. Sabi niya, nagpunta ako ron, excited na excited ako. Marinig ko, ganun lang pala. Why? Because you put so much expectation on people and you gave them too much, too much expectation from yourself. Ladies and gentlemen, it is all about Jesus. You stand here to glorify God. That's it. It is not us, but it is about the Lord. Matthew 7, 21 to 23. Pragmatism. Matthew 7. Now, no, putting governor dito, putting the congressman ang sinabi again. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? Pragmatism. Lord, we prophesied. You need to accept that. You need to receive us. You need to honor that because we prophesied in your name. In thy name have cast out devils. So we are of you because we cast out your enemy. Ladies and gentlemen, the enemy can play you. The enemy can think that you are allies. 
You have to be careful. And in thy name done many wonderful works. Lord, in your name, we made blind people to hear. I can also do that. Amen? Blind people to see. And lame people to walk. We did that in your name. Pragmatism. And then Jesus Christ will tell them, and then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. If you think that what you're doing is right, because it works, and even though it's not according to the word of God, God says what you're doing is iniquity. We are sinning before God. That is why we are not the final authority. Why? Because we're not perfect. How can we make ourselves the standard if we ourselves are not perfect? The standard must be absolute in order to prove all things. Not only that, number two, if we're going to, to prove all things, that not only that you are not the standard, but even the Christians are not the standard by which to prove all things. Yes, we are forgiven. Yes, we are saved. Yes, we are justified. Yes, we are sanctified. Yes, we are glorified. Yes, we have a divine nature, but we are still in the flesh. And being in the flesh makes us vulnerable to sin, to error, and to deception. So we cannot say that we are always right, even though we have the divine nature of God. Look at Galatians chapter 5, verse number 17. Galatians 5, 17. For the flesh lasteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. We are even helpless. So how can we be the standard? Look at Romans 8, 8. So then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. There are times that we are carnal. Or there are many, many times that we are carnal. So how can we be the standard? So the Christians are not the standard in proving all things. And then number three, the deacons and pastors are not the standard in proving all things. So this is where the battle is going on right now. Because in many churches, it is being preached that the pastor will, you cannot question what the pastor is teaching. Meaning to say that they should be the standard in our churches. That they should be the standard in proving all things. The truth of the matter is that the pastors are commanded to prove all things. Therefore, they are not the standard. To prove all things. Look at 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse number 5. But watch thou in all things. Paul says to Timothy, Endure affliction, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. Even uh, Timothy, a minister, is commanded by the Apostle Paul to make full proof of his ministry because his ministry is still lacking in so many things. So if we are going to make our pastors, our deacons as the standard in proving all things, then there is a possibility or we definitely will fall into error because we are going to just wait on what they are going to tell us and that is going to be the standard of our belief question what if the pastor is wrong then everybody will be wrong what if the pastor is abusive then everybody will be abused what if the pastor is grilled is greedy or filthy looker then everybody will be a made merchandise of the pastor so that is why the deacons and the pastors even though they are giving more time studying the word of god are not the standard that in that we must use in order to prove all things. Actually, no matter how you study the word of God, you will not come to the point that it will be enough. Look at Psalms chapter 25, verses 4 to 5. Psalms 25, 4 to 5. Look at what the Bible says. Show me thy ways, O Lord. Teach me thy paths. Lead me in thy truth 
and teach me, for thou art the God of my salvation, on thee do I wait all the day. You see, we need to learn. We need to be taught. No matter how you study the word of God, you must still wait on God to teach you and to reveal things to you through his what? Word. Amen? So therefore, the standard by which we are going to prove all things is the word of God. Amen? So that is our standard. It's not people. It's not Christians. It's not even the deacons or the pastors of the church. But the standard in proving all things is none other than the Bible, the Word of God. Why? Because the Word of God is perfect. Psalms 19, 7. Psalms 19, verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. So if you're going to test all things, it should be perfect. So that you will be sure that the result of your testing will be correct. It will be right. It will be sure. It is like in ACE. Your uh, scoring uh, station must give you the perfect and correct answer. Because there is no way for you to test your examination if there is no absolute truth wherein you can prove all things. And ladies and gentlemen, the Word of God is absolutely perfect. It will never commit mistake. Amen? Why? Proverbs chapter 30, verse number 5. Why is it perfect? Every Word of God is pure. It is perfect because it is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in Him. That if we are going to test all things by the Word of God, then we have a shield that the devil cannot penetrate in order to deceive us with every wind of doctrine that he is trying to throw at us so that we will go out of God's will. Not only that, but Psalms 119, 105. When you use the Word of God to test all things, the Bible says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. The word of God will give us enlightenment. It will make us see what is right. It will make us see what is wrong. There are things that we believe is right. Seem it right unto a man, but it is wrong. But when you test it by the word of God, you will see what is right and you will see what is wrong. Amen? Look at verse 130 of the same chapter. The entrance of thy words giveth light. It giveth understanding unto the simple. You see, there are so many things that we are not doing in our Christian life. Why? Because we do not have proper understanding of those things. And if we will only allow the word of God to penetrate us, and to prove things to us, then we will know what to do. Because God will give us understanding. Not only that, Psalms 119 verse 9, it will make us do things according to His will. Why? Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. When you are cleansed, then you can think clearly. When you are cleansed, then you will see clearly. When you are cleansed, then you can be pure in your motive as you embark to obey God's will in your life. Not only that, look at Hebrews chapter 4, verse number 12. This is very important. For the word of God is quick. It is alive. It will do something in our lives. It is powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Look at this. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and the joints and marrow and is a what? Discerner of the thoughts and intents of our hearts. Listen, even our motives can be tested by the word of God. If what we are doing is really right or if, if it is wrong. You see, listen. 
Because as human beings, we try to deceive ourselves by uh, believing that we have a good motive when the truth of the matter is that our motive is selfish. And God, the Word of God will reveal that to us. If, we, if what we are doing is really for the glory of God or if what we are doing is for our self-glory. I remember I served the Lord for 12 years in the Philippines before I went here to Cambodia. I thought for those 12 years that I am serving God because I am sacrificing so much. I sacrificed my family in serving the Lord. I, I even risk losing my family because of serving God. That's what I think. I conduct Bible study until the wee hours of the morning trying to find those people that will uh, finish their ship so that I can share to them the Word of God. We try to go to different places. We are in Santa Cruz. We try to reach Sinaloan. We try to reach Bae. We try to reach uh, Liliu. We, we try to reach so many places thinking that I am serving God. But then, when I'm alone, when I'm really looking at the reason why I'm doing those things, I cannot help. But my conscience is saying, you're doing those things so that you can be recognized. And it's the truth. It's the truth. Well, Pastor, that's you. Well, at least I've seen from the Word of God that what I am doing is for myself not really for the glory of God. Because I am trying to see what accolade I can get for doing these things. But if you are going to test what you are doing through the Word of God, then it will give you a discernment of the thoughts and of the intents of your heart because looking at your heart alone will deceive you. Because our heart is deceitful above all. And not only deceitful, but our heart is desperately wicked. And we cannot know our heart apart from the word of God. Amen? Only God can reveal to us what is in our heart. That even today, we can ask the question, why are we here? Why are we serving God? Why, why do we want to, you know, to, to stay here? Why? The Word of God, through the Holy Spirit of God, will reveal to us the reason why. Amen? So that's why the standard in proving all things is the Word of God. Why? Because it is the only absolute truth that we have here on earth. Amen? The Bible says, Thy word is truth. Uh, I believe John 17, verse number 7, if I'm not mistaken. Now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are kaya 7.17. Ganun lang yan eh. Pompiang. Oh, so, kaya pala eh. Kung nalaman ko lang, tumama, sana ako. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. So this is absolute. You can never go wrong if you will prove all things by the word of God. Amen? So, in order for us to prove all things, we must then study the word diligently. Amen? 2 Timothy 2.15 Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You see, it is not enough that we know that the word of God is the standard wherewith to prove for us to prove all things. Yes, it is the standard, but we must study it diligently so that the word of God can help us prove all things. Amen? Because 
even the lawyers, they cannot just use the Constitution. They cannot just use the penal code. They cannot just use any system that was put in place. They need to study them so that they can apply them in appropriate places. So, having the Word of God as the standard of truth or to prove all things is not an automatic that you can prove all things once you have the Word of God. You must know the Word of God. Amen? You must study it diligently. You must rightly divide the Word of truth. Because if you cannot do it, then it is impossible for you to prove all things. It is impossible for us to know what the Word of God or what uh, the things that we are doing are really, if they are really according to God's Word or if they will really glorify God. So we must be skillful in using the Word of God. Hebrews chapter 5, 13 to 14. That's why if you are a Christian and you're not interested in the Word of God, do not even think that you cannot know what is right and what is wrong. That is simply impossible. For everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. So you need to dig deeper. You need to put effort to understand, to know, to become skillful in using the word of God. But strong meat belongs to them that are of full age. Even those who by reason of use have exercised have their senses exercised to discern, to know both good and evil. If you do not know what is good, you do not know what is evil, how can you prove all things? How can you know if it is good? How can you know if it is evil? So there must be what we call skill, skill in using the Word of God. And how can we acquire that skill? By reason of use. Use it, study it, apply it. And we must make the Bible a mighty part of our lives so that we will become uh, skillful in using it and therefore make ourselves qualified to prove all things according to the Word of God. So, Pastor, it is our skill. No, we do that depending on somebody. Look at John chapter 16, verse number 13. How be it when, the, when he... The spirit of truth is come. He will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. So, when we study the word of God, depending on the power of the Holy Spirit, then we are going to understand and discern the word of God. Amen. So, it is not our skill but it is the skill of the Holy Spirit coupled with our diligence that will make us understand God's Word and thereby we can use it in order to prove all things. That's why without diligent study and without depending on the power of the Holy Spirit, then the Word of God will be just another book. It's just another book. It's not going to be uh, something special it's not going to be a divine in our lives it will be just another book so for us to do this number one we must be conscious always of what we read hear and do because if we forget how can we test it that's why we must always be conscious of what we are Hearing. When we listen, we need to be conscious. Do not just sit there and just, you know, hear something without actually processing it. Because there are people who will just sit there and they will hear me speak, but then afterwards, they will forget about it. You ask them, what was the preaching of the pastor? Well, I, I remember the joke. What are the truths that were given in the preaching? We cannot even recall them. And how can we recall them? How can we know them? There must be a conscious effort to listen. 
Yung makikinig ka talaga. You see, there are people who are hearing, but they're not understanding. Because there is no interest. But if you are interested, then you are going to get more from what you are hearing than if you are not interested. So there must always be a conscious effort. That's why if you need to take notes, take notes. So that there is something that you can prove when you get home. There is something that you can, uh, that you can test opening the Word of God when you get home. But sometimes we just don't care. Because anyway, we have no interest in proving what we have heard from the pre preaching of God's Word or from the teaching of God's Word or even when you attend a Bible study or even a Bible institute. So there must be a conscious uh, effort to hear, a conscious effort to read, and a conscious effort or awareness of what we are doing. Ano ba ginagawa natin? Dapat conscious tayo. Aware tayo. So that we can test. May nagawa ka, halimbawa sa church. And then, you test it. Kanina nag, nag-preach. Iniisip ko yung ganito. Tama ba yun? You test it. If, if it is according to the Word of God, if it is something that will glorify God, if it is something that is uh, uh, according to God's will. That's why, we need to have the spirit of the Bereans, Acts 17, 11. So the reason why, once they got home, they were able to uh, search the scriptures, whether those things were so, is because when they heard the word of God, they received it with readiness of mind. Meaning to say, they're interested, they are conscious, they know what they have heard. Alam nila yung pinakinggan nila. Hindi yung pumasok dito, lumabas doon. Have you heard the story of uh, three hunters who went into the woods? One is a, an iglesia ni Cristo. The other one is a Catholic and the other one is a Baptist. So, they saw a bird and all of them at the same time aimed at that bird and all of them fired at the same time. And one of them hit the bird and it fell down. So when they look at the bird, they said, who was able to hit the bird? The Catholic said, I did. The Iglesia Ni Cristo said, I did. The Baptist says, I did. So let us examine the bird. When they examine the bird, they ascertain that the one who hit the bird is the Baptist pastor. You may ask me, how? Because the bullet entered one ear and exited the other ear. And that is what is happening in most Baptist churches today. They listen to the word of God in one ear and it will exit the other ear instead of going into our hearts and mind so that we can ascertain if the word of God preached is according to the word of God or not. So that's why we need to be conscious. They receive the word with all readiness of mind. But once they get home, they tested it. Why? They need to be sure. Because if it is of God and from God, it is something that is important. Amen? Eh, kukuha ka nga lang ng kurso, talagang research ka eh. Ito ba ang kurso na dapat sa akin? Bakit? That's important for your life. Mag-aasawa ka. Ha? Ano yung hinahanap ko sa lalaki? Talagang wala kang tigil ng kakaano. Search. Ano yung inaanap ko sa babae? Wala kang tigil na kakasas. Why? Importante sa buhay mo. Eh pagdating sa Word of God, hindi. Hindi ba importante ang Word of God sa buhay natin? Is the Word of God not important in our lives? So that's the reason why many Christians are being deceived and are being abused because they are not proving all things. They just listen to what the pastor will say and to what these people in the cloth will say and then for them, that is the final authority. So listen carefully. Receive the word readily. And then open the word to prove all things. So when we prove all things, we will find out that some things 
that some of the things that we hear are right and some are wrong. There are only two results when we prove all things. We will know that what we heard are right or if they are wrong. We will find out that what we have read is right or if it is wrong. We will find out that what we have done is right or if it is wrong. So, there must be a spirit of humility when we prove all things. We must have that spirit of humility. Why? Because when we found out that we are wrong, then we must admit that we are wrong. Amen? We must admit the mistakes. We must admit our weakness. We must admit our sins. And we must desire to change. Look at James 1, 23 to 25. This is what will happen when you prove all things. This is what will happen when you uh, use the word of God to look at who you are. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way, and straightway forgeteth what manner of man he was. You heard it? You forgot about it? But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. So when you prove all things, you will find out your mistakes. Admit it if you're wrong. Ito hindi ko maintindihan sa ibang ano eh. Teacher eh. Pastors. Pag mali sila, imbis na tanggapin, nagawa ng excuse. Nagawa ng dahilan. If you're wrong, you're wrong. That is why you are proving all things. Because when you prove all things, there is something, one thing that will happen is you will find out if you are right or if you are wrong. Now, if you are right, keep on doing it. But if you are wrong, admit that you are wrong. Do not be uh, so prideful that you think that you are above the truth. And you need to admit that. When you prove all things, you will find out your weakness. Look at Galatians chapter 6, 3 to 5. For if a man think himself to be something, when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. Amen? Amen? Calling big shot pastors. Hear ye, hear ye. Big shot pastors. Let every man prove his own work. And then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone. And not in another. Look at verse number, let's go back to verse number 3. This is very important. For if a man think himself to be something. But the truth is we are nothing. Then we deceive ourselves. Who am I? Who are you? We're nothing. Jesus says, without me, you can do nothing. Paul says, I'm already dead. And the only reason why I'm alive is because Christ is living in me. So where is boasting then? How can you even think that you are better than other people? How can you even think that you are accomplishing something for the Lord, ladies and gentlemen, without God? There is nothing that we can do. You see, you will see your weakness. You will see that you are nothing. Verse number 5. For every man shall bear his own burden. So we need to admit our mistakes. We need to admit our weakness. We need to admit our sins. And then we need to have a desire to change. Why? All of the things that we will find out will become nothing if there is no result in our lives. Amen? Oh, nakita mong mahina ka? Ah, mahina pala ako rito. Okay, mahina ako rin. Yan lang. Ay, mali pala ito. Okay, mali yan. Ay, kasalanan pala ito. Okay, kasalanan niya. What are we going to do with it? 
You see, the reason why we are proving all things is so that we, our life will be according to the will of God. Why? You see, there is a great advantage in proving all things. And there is a great blessing in knowing that we are wrong. Why? Look at First John 1 John 1.9. If we confess our sins, you found out that you're wrong. So now you have the advantage and the privilege to confess your wrong. To confess your weakness, to confess your sin. And once we do that, the Bible says, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all. Amen? Our unrighteousness. So that is why there must be a spirit of humility and there must be a desire to change. When we prove all things, there must be expectation of what? That we will learn what is right. Amen? That's why you're proving things. To know. To learn what is right. What is according to the will of God. Psalms 119 verse 18, please. Look at what the Bible says. Open down mine eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. You see, because we do not know. So we want to prove it. So that we can know that our eyes will be open and we can behold the truth from the word of God. Amen? Isn't it wonderful to know what is right? Isn't it good to know what is right? So there is an expectation to learn. There is an expectation to know. Look at Psalms 139, 23 to 24. Psalms 139, 23 to 24. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there be any wicked way in me. And lead me in the way everlasting so that we will know the way everlasting. We will know the way that is right. We will know where we should be. So that's why there must be a spirit of expectation. And then there must be a desire to obey. Amen. Because what is the use of knowing these things? If there is no desire for us to obey, what is that? Good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Romans chapter 12 and verse number 2. So, when we prove all things, there must be willingness to let go. There must be willingness to let go. What's that? We must be willing to let go of our errors. Uy, mali pala yung quick prayerism. Mali pala yung easy believism. Let it go. Amen? Let go. Hindi yung, alam mo nang mali, napauwi ka ng Pilipinas. Inid ba'y ka mag-preach? Evangelistic meeting. Pagdating mo sa invitation, sino po ang kinusob ng Diyos tasang kamay? Sumunod kayo sa pananayin ko, Panginoon. Ganun pa rin. Let go! Don't do it anymore! Why? You already know that it is erroneous. You already know that it is right. You already know that it can do more harm than good. So let it go! Ako, minsan, sa simula mga kapatid, awkward para sabihin ko sa inyo. Ay, nakasanayan na natin yan eh. Ako nga, style ko pag evangelistic meeting. Sino po ang kinausap ng Panginoong gustong maligtas tas ang kamay? Walang nagtatas ng kamay. Sabihin ko, salamat, meron pa ba? O, oh, biro mong style. Oh, para lang yung iba, sumunod. O, yung iba, matindi pa eh. Tandaan mo, sa impyerno ka pupunta. Pero kung gusto mo, tas mo ang kamay mo! Tas mo! Tumingin ka sa akin! Tumingin ka sa akin! Oh, talagang. Ay, talagang kulang na lang kung may baril ka. Ano? Tatanggapin mo, Panginoon, no? Hindi. Na, na, nakatutok na sa'yo to. Kulang na lang, ganunin mo eh. Para tumanggap. Let it go! Amen? There must be a willingness to let go. Let go of the mistakes. Let go of your weaknesses, your sins, your cares, your ambitions, your self 
and even your relationships. Let it go. Let it go. Amen? We have to let it go. That's the reason why we want to know the truth. Look at 1 Peter 5, 7. Luanag yan. Sabi, casting all your cares upon Him. For He cared for you. You have so many cares in life, that's why you cannot serve God. Let it go! And give it to the hands of God. Philippians 4, 6. Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. You have, you, you have anxieties in life. You have desires in life. Give it to the hands of God. Let go of it. And let God do it for you. So there must be willingness to let go and let God. When we prove all things. And then, when we prove all things, there must be a conviction to cling to something. What are we going to cling to? To the things that are right. Because you will know what is right. Cling to it. You will know what is wrong. Let it go. You will see your strength. Cling to it. You will see your weakness. Let it go. You will see the righteousness that God has wrought in your life. Cling to it. You will see your unrighteousness. Give it to God. Let go of it. Confess it. So there are things that you will let go and there are things that you will cling to. You will cling to what is right. You will cling to what is sound. Sound doctrine. You're not going to uh, cling to doctrines that are wrong. They may be convenient, but if they are wrong, let it go. And cling to that which is right. It may be hard. It may not make, uh, give you a church that is large in number. Let go of it. And cling to what is right. That even though you're just a handful, but if you are a handful of God's miracle, then God will be glorified. So, let us cling to what is pure. Let us cling to what is virtuous. Let us cling to the will of God. And let us cling to biblical doctrines. And let go of man-made doctrines. Especially when it comes to pragmatism or getting benefit for ourselves. Let us cling to the faith that was once delivered unto us. And let us cling to contending and guarding of the faith. That's why let's, let's listen to me. When you prove all things, and when you hold fast that which is good, then you cannot avoid contending for the faith. Why do you need to know the truth? So that you can uphold the truth. Amen? But mo alam ng katotohanan. Wala po, Pastor, alam ko. So ngayon, alam mo yung totoo? At yung totoo ay sinisira ng mali. Ano gagawin mo? Wala po, alam ko yung totoo. Basta ako po, alam ko yung tama. Eh, may mali. Alam ko rin yung mali. Ano gagawin mo? Wala, alam ko lang. No. The Bible says, content for the faith. That's why a Christian that proves all things is a Christian who is ready to cling to the conviction that the Holy Spirit will give him. Hey, mga kapatid, by studying this, you can prove from the Word of God. You can prove from the Word of God that a child of God must do everything in order to preserve and to contend for the truth. Because even the Lord Jesus Christ did it. No, Pastor, you don't understand. The Lord Jesus Christ is very tender. Of course, we need to be tender as children of God. But I do not know if you have read the story or the truth when the Lord Jesus Christ drove the money changers or those people making merchandise of God's house. Not only that they will they will be driven out by the Lord, He even used a whip to drive them away. Is that not contending for what is right? There are times that we have to stand fast. There are times that we just have to stand. But every time we must be standing. 
for what is right. That's why we need to prove all things. Be because we need to know. And once we know, then we hold fast. Hindi mabilis, ha? Matibay sa kapampangan, matigik. Maigpit. Hold fast that which is good. And then, those that are not good, those that are contrary to what is good, we will let go of it. And we do not want to have anything to do with it. That's why, if you're a Christian and you know what is wrong, and you condone and stay to that which is wrong, then we are committing crime against God. That's why we need to prove all things. And when we prove all things, there must be willingness to let go and a conviction to cling to. What are those convictions? That we are going to be loyal to God. That we will love God above all. Matthew 22, verse 37. Love the Lord, your God. He said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. We must cling to these things. Amen? We need to love God. We must be loyal to God. Our loyalty must always be to God. Then we must be committed to the church. 1 Timothy 3.15 But if I tarry long, that thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. There must be commitment. There must be good behavior as we are a part of the house of God or the church of God. And then, if you will read Acts chapter 2, that they continued daily. That's commitment. From house to house, that is commitment. And they continued in the apostles' doctrine. That is commitment to study the word of God. What are we going to cling to? What conviction do we need to cling to? Loving the word. Psalms 119 verse 97. Look at what the psalmist says about the word of God. Oh, how love I thy law. See, meron pang oh, filled with emotion. It is my meditation all the day. Verse 165. Great peace of day which love thy law. And nothing. Nothing. Shall what? Offend them. Iba offended kayo pag narinig kayo o kikinig kayo ng word of God. Na-offend kayo sa katotohanan? Na-offend ka kasi ang katotohanan hindi ayon sa paniniwala mo? Sabi nga ni, ano, ni pangalan nun, yung missionary sa Singapore na once a year ko nando doon, sabi niya, that is your truth. And your truth is different from the truth of others. And it's different from my truth. Sabi ko, Messiah dito ah. Yun daw truth ni Jong. Pag nagpo si Jong, oh that is your truth, young man. But it is different from their truth. Ano yung truth niya? Relative. Ang truth natin, absolute. Sa bagay, hindi ako magtataka kasi sabi niya noon, life is a joke. Kaya pag nagpo-post siya, bago ako sumagot, tatanong ko muna, is this a joke? Or what? Because for him, everything is a joke. His life is even a joke. So loving the Word, there must be the desire to love the Word of God. What conviction do we need to cling to? Faithful stewardship. 1 Corinthians 4.2 There is this requirement in stewards that a man be found faithful. All of us are stewards of everything that we have. It belongs to God. So it must be used. It must be consumed for the glory of God. Because they are not ours. You may say, I have children. No, they are God's. They were entrusted to you as a steward. And we need to be faithful and good. They need to grow up in the way of the Lord. So that when they are old, they will not depart from the will of God in their lives. Holy living, Romans 12, 2. 
and 1 Peter 2.9. There are things that we learn. There are things that we know. There are things that we teach. But most of the time, these are the things that we don't live in our lives. And all preachers are guilty of this. Maybe much more me. But it is not an excuse that we are in the flesh in order for us not to do this holy living for the testimony of God's word. There must be a constant desire to live a holy life. Obeying the Great Commission, Matthew 28, 19 to 20, we will not read it. But there must be a conviction to cling to be obedient to the Great Commission. That's why every Christian must have a part in our faith promise program. Because this is how we obey the Great Commission of God. And the greatest way to obey the Great Commission is for us to go ourselves. But maybe the Lord is not calling us to do that. So there is an alternative that part of our life must be dedicated to the Great Commission. And then, depending on God through prayers. Luke 18.1 He says that men ought always to pray and not to faint. And then in our text, 1 Thessalonians 5.17 Pray without ceasing. Why? When we pray, we show that we depend upon God. That we do not have our own power. So why do we have to cling to all these things? Only one reason. And one reason alone. And we will end in that reason. 1 Corinthians 10.31 The Bible says, Whether therefore ye eat, or drink, or whatsoever ye do, do all to the glory of God. Why do you have to prove all things? So that we can glorify God. Why do we have to prove all things so that we can hold fast to that which is good and acceptable and perfect will of God? Why do we have to prove all things so that we will know what is wrong and we will let go? So that we will know what is right and we will hold fast? So that we will know who we are and we will conform to who God wants us to be? That's why we need to prove all things. And when the Bible says, prove all things, it means all that is true in our lives. I will repeat. My all things may not be your all things. We may have different all things. But there is one thing in common. That all of us must prove all things in our lives. Because that is the safest way to live our lives for the Lord. And that is the only way that we can glorify God in our lives. Amen? Shall we stand up? We will pray. We will take our offering.